What were you not honest about? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Yes. You you know, before that interview, um, you know, he had us practicing every single day. Practicing what? Answering questions. And if he didn't like our answer, he would tell us exactly what to say and how to say it. So anytime oh, you mention wow, anything, Asriel, yeah. I'm just I'm stunned by this. <laughs> yeah. So, so anytime you mention go. anytime you mention anything about difference, we already know to say I'm not here to talk about that because that's what he told us to say every single time. That's exactly what you said. First of all, I'm not here to talk about my personal life. And I would never share with no one what I do in or outside of the bedroom. So when the interview was over and you all go back to his apartment, the three of you, what is the conversation? He was so happy. Mm. Uh, You Mm. said, Mm. I was not honest in the interview that you did with us. What what were you not honest about? All right, y'all ready to hear this? Yes, yes, yes. I got the video right here. Make sure y'all like and share and subscribe. I done told y'all she was going to do an interview this morning. And look, I was right. So let me tell you, uh, Miss Clary, she is speaking her truth as she should. Okay. She was with this man when she was a minor. This is a 50-year-old man, you know, and it's a dang shame. But um, anyway, she's going to speak her truth, so we're going to get on that. And I want you guys to check this out, all right? What happened to her, I was really glad to see her in such a different space because what she's been through, when I say unspeakable things, I won't, I won't go there, only just say at one point feces are involved. Take your mind wherever you want to go, it's that graphic. Uh, the humiliation, the degradation that happened to this young woman, and the fact that she's still afraid because she's worried she still gets from R. Kelly's supporters. She lives in fear. And, you know, at the time, you know, she said very disparaging things against her family. She said, imagine, I hadn't seen anybody for five years. I'd never seen any other woman other than yourself who wasn't in an abusive relationship. That's why that made such a mark on her. She, she said she gave him control. Which, yes. Which almost um, places the blame on herself. On herself, yes. Right. Do you realize, does she realize at this age that he was manipulating her and that he actually took control? Yeah, she realizes, realizes it now, though, Nate. But at the time, you know, he was very good in terms of grooming them. For sure. You know, and, and, and you would think that everything was fine. When we came to do that interview, he would say, oh, they're out shopping, which is what he would do. He would send them shopping, so they came back with all these shopping bags to show these people aren't being held against their will. They're happy. They're out shopping. Having a great life. Yes, yes. Time of the interview with us, were you afraid when you were sitting there talking to us? I was. He did his interview first. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this He came in and he told us to be angry and be upset and she's gonna try to do this and you get it. Oh, he told you that? Yes, and and so we were, we came in angry. We so he in. told you be angry? Yes, and um, I was scared because I was like, I don't want the world to see me this way, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm loving, I'm caring, I'm compassionate. Mm-hmm. And um, no one got to see that side of me. <laughs> You know, it's interesting because your dad called me after and said, that is not my daughter. That is not who she is. That is not how she speaks. That is not what she believes. During the trial, you testified that uh, you said, I was not honest in the interview that you did with us. What what were you not honest about? Everything. Everything. (laughs) Everything, yes. You you know, before that interview, um, you know, he had us practicing every single day practicing what answering questions and if he didn't like our answer he would tell us exactly what to say and how to say it so anytime you mention wow, anything Asriel, yeah i'm just i'm stunned by this <laughs> yeah so, so anytime you mention go. anytime you mention anything about preference we already know to say i'm not here to talk about that because that's what he told us to say every single time. And that's exactly time. what you said. First Between of all, I'm not you? here to talk about my personal life. Okay. And I would never share with no one what I do in or outside of the bedroom. So when the interview was over and you all go back to his apartment, the three of you, what is the conversation? He was so happy. He was happy? He was so happy. He was like, you guys did amazing. You know, you did so well. You carried yourself so well. I believe he even, like, 
got food and wanted to celebrate. That's how happy he was with that interview. And I was just there like, wow. What did he think about how he came across in the interview? Uh, truthfully, he think I think he he believed that he had he done he had done well. He he felt like he had really uh, did a made a great reflection of himself and where he was in life and how all these women were lying on him and how all these people were just you know out to get him and you know that sympathy card that he just loved so much. Did you ever have conversations when he wasn't around to say this is not good, this is not healthy, we got to get the hell out of here? Did you ever have any conversations I like that? I feel like a lot of people tried but everyone always got beat over it because he was very good at manipulating a situation so even if he knew or not, he would basically say, he could come in his room right now and he would say, you know, I've already spoken to Joy. She already told me exactly what you guys have been talking about. You have five minutes to be honest or you're going to be thrown around this entire room. Mm -hmm. Everything that we were living in had become very normal. And um, to, I had to break out of that. I had to realize that this is actually abnormal. Yeah, the dysfunction was so prevalent that after a while it did feel normal to you? It did because it was not only me, it was other women, other women who were older than me. You know, when I met him at 17, he had four other women. And so these women are all normalizing his actions and then you have assistants normalizing his actions and you have workers and security and everyone else that normalizes it. So. You, me being very young at that time, I just learned to normalize it. Your interview stands out because you are one of the few who we've heard who defended him so vocally and so adamantly and now ends up testifying against him. Well, your testimony was very key, mm. Azriel, it was very key. It was very graphic, it was very painful. Some of it was so graphic the judge wouldn't even allow it to be, re be released yeah. um, to the public. And I'm wondering what it was like for you sitting there uh, looking at him while you're testifying about what your life had been like with him. I feel like it was, it was very disturbing um, to have to relive those moments. And um, I don't know, a piece of me was happy because I felt like... Happy? Yeah, because I felt like this person no longer has control over me, you know? You, you, you don't tell me what to do and what to wear and where to go and how long to be in a room anymore, so. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that you're sitting here today is very brave and very courageous mm -hmm. that you would come back and sit down and want people to see yeah. who you really are. I think it's very important, um, you know, even I have to take accountability for my actions. It's okay to reevaluate your life. It is okay to change your mind. You know, you are never too old to wake up and say, hey, I thought this was good for me, but it's actually not. Yeah. And so I feel like that's why it was important for me to come back here and uh, see you again, because it is okay to change your mind. Mm -hmm. It is okay to apologize and forgive yourself more importantly. 